everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beast Stone Block 3 with another tutorial Let's Play video. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we completed the Stone Layers quest. We did that by going up an extra 30 or 40 blocks from the Andesite layer. That got us to the Deep Slate layer. From there, we went out into our world, back to the original dungeon that we'd found. That gave us the stone dungeon quest and the spawner dungeon quest. We then continued on to the nether, which technically we did do more than a couple episodes ago, but because we didn't have the stone layer quest completed, it never auto-completed for us. But we went, got the nether, and then in the nether, we managed to get ourselves a nether dungeon. Two other quests that we managed to get last episode, though, was the mob soul quest. We got that by fighting some mobs and getting some mob souls. That allowed us to get the soul sand quest, which, again, was something that we did quite a while ago. Now, the whole reason we did that was so we could get ourselves some blaze heads. I also took the opportunity and we grabbed ourselves some of these blaze burners. We've got four running underneath our uh, steam engine back there. We've got an extra three for us to use in some other create machines as well. This episode, though, what we are going to do is we're going to go and finish ourselves off this getting started tab and complete the five cobblestone generator quests. But before we get started, now would be a great time to click on that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time I post a new video to my channel. Also, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support, click on the join button down below. Check out all the perks available for my community members, one of which is going to be the supporter shout out. You might have seen those popping up throughout my previous videos. Alternately, you can check out my Patreon page. There's a link down below in the description. But enough about that. Let's get back to the video. So, like I said, this episode, we're going to focus on those five cobblestone generators. To make a tier one cobblestone generator, we are going to need some compressed stone. We've done similar things previously, but to make one block of compressed stone, you need nine blocks of regular stone. Now we're going to take six of those compressed stone blocks, one bucket of lava, one water bucket, and a piece of glass. That's going to get us a tier one cobble gen. Now, if you're not familiar with the cobble gens, they are a really, really cool block. Rather than make a multi-block structure with like water and lava in your world and they kind of meet in the center and you'll create cobble that way and then you just mine it up, this block does that automatically. So to get it to work, all we need to do is place it underneath any storage. We open it up, we can see that it is slowly making ourselves pieces of cobblestone. Now this is going to come in very handy as we start using more cobble in our world, breaking it down to the gravel, breaking it down into sand, running it through our machines, turning it into lava for our seared melters and our seared heaters and things like that. But tier one is fairly slow. So if you've got the resources and we absolutely do, it is highly advisable that you start leveling this up as soon as possible. Now, to level up a tier one cobblestone generator, we are first going to need to make some seared bricks. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into this because we've done this one previously. You can see we've already got our smeltery built. We've already got our melter built. All of that was done with seared bricks. But basically, melting grout in your system will get you some seared stone. I'm going to do the exact same thing by melting some already made seared bricks. But I could be using grout to do this as well. But three full blocks of seared bricks or a full block of seared stone in your melter. We'll take our cobblestone generator. We'll put it into a casting basin. Oh, 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 turn that off. Okay, that was a mistake on my part. I think we must have made two bricks. So we're going to take two additional seared bricks and we're going to go throw that into our melter here just because we need three full blocks to do this. And then we're going to go take that, pour it on top of our tier one cobblestone generator. And as soon as it's done, it's going to start turning itself into a tier two cobblestone generator. There we go. We pop that out. Now, one thing about the tier two cobblestone generator is we do get a little bit of seared stone left in our melter. Not enough to do a lot with. So I'm just going to go and let's pour it into the basin. And just to get rid of it, we're going to go break that basin and put it back. Now, this is going to be a level up on the tier one uh, cobblestone generator, but it is still fairly easy to level it up even more. If we take three blocks of iron and five iron ingots, run this through our melter. And as soon as that turns into molten iron, there you go. We're going to take our tier two cobblestone generator, put it into the casting basin again, pour that molten iron over top. This is going to go cool down. 
And there you go. We now have ourselves a tier three cobblestone generator. The nice thing about this recipe is that it ends up using all of that iron in our system. So we don't have anything left over. Now the tier three cobblestone generator is better than the tier two cobblestone generator, but we can actually upgrade it one more time by using three blocks of gold and five gold ingots again into our melter. As soon as this turns into molten gold, we're going to take our tier three cobblestone generator, put it back into the casting basin, click on that faucet. That's going to pour the molten gold over on top. Once this is emptied out and cooled down, there you go. We now have a tier four cobblestone generator, but wait, there's even more. We can go from our tier four cobblestone generator all the way up to the tier five cobblestone generator by using three blocks of diamonds with two additional diamonds in our melter. Now, as a demonstration, this was the bottleneck we were reaching about two episodes ago. I can't actually melt diamonds by using lava. We've got to upgrade our heat source for this to work. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two blaze heads. We're going to go throw them into our melter. When we melt them down, they're going to turn into blazing blood. There we go. We've now got 200 millibuckets of blazing blood. It is not a lot, but it's more than enough for what we need to do for this episode. To get it into our world, we can't pour it into our casting basin. We can't make ingots out of it. What we're going to have to do is pour it into something like a seared fuel tank. Now, a seared fuel tank is something we built previously, but to make it in a crafting table, it is one block of glass surrounded by eight seared bricks. And then we're going to come out. Let's go pop this casting basin out. We're going to go replace it with the seared fuel tank. We're going to pour that in there. Once it's all in there, we're going to go remove it out. We'll replace the casting basin and then let's go remove this sear tank from below. We'll replace it with the blazing blood tank. And now what we can do is throw our blocks of diamonds and our actual diamonds in there and you can see they're starting to melt. One thing I should mention is that you can do this in the melter. I'm using this one because it's nice and simple and it's easy to kind of view. You can also do this in your smeltery as well. One thing you got to be careful of with the smeltery is certain items will alloy together. So you don't want to throw everything in at once, but certainly you can use whichever is more convenient for your world. So that diamond's melted down. It is now molten. We're going to take the cobblestone generator tier four, put it into the casting basin, pour that molten diamond over top. And like the other times, as soon as it's poured out, as soon as it's cooled down, there you go. We have now got our tier five cobblestone generator. This is absolutely perfect. This is exactly what we want. Unfortunately, this does leave us with a little bit of molten diamond in our melter here. It is only 30 millibuckets of diamond as well. It's not really worth our time to kind of, you know, put, take that out and use it for something different. So I'm just going to go pour that into our casting basin, break that casting basin again. And there you go. We've now got ourselves a clean system for the next uh, whatever it is that we're going to have to melt. Now, as a demonstration, I could have been showing each one of these tiers, but I think just seeing the tier five in action is going to show you guys exactly how important it is to upgrade these as soon as possible. I'm going to take it. We're going to put it below that chest again, and it's just pounding out cobblestone here. This is this is the way to get cobblestone for days. One of these in your world will make it very, very difficult for you to ever run out of cobblestone. But before we finish off, let's go open up that quest book. Cobblestone generator tier one, random reward, diamond ore. That's actually really kind of funny. Uh, next up is the tier two cobblestone generator, random reward, petal apothecary. That's something that's probably gonna be coming up soon is the botania or botania. Tier three cobblestone generator, chainmail helmet. We've already got one of those. We got a much better helmet already. Random reward for tier four is a repair talisman. That actually could be something cool. And then last but not least is the tier five cobblestone generator. Random reward, Illuminati column. Interesting. So this looks like it is a torch of some sort. That's actually kind of cool. I, I don't know if I would make one, but you know what? As a gift, it is kind of a, oh, I got a torch right there. It is kind of a little cool little thing. So we'll just throw those there for now. We'll come up with a nicer place to put them sometime in the future. Now this repair talisman repairs nearby players items, slot belt on pedestal, restores one durability every one second. So I think we can build a pedestal and put it on that, or we can put it on our belt, which is right there. 
Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's repairing our destructor hammer. That is awesome. Actually, it's, look, it's actually already repaired my armor as well. Okay, so that is really cool. I am going to keep that one handy. I keep telling myself I'm not going to use these fancy rewards, but that one's too cool to give up. Regardless, that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys found it informative. I'll see you guys next time. Good bye.